Hello everyone, welcome to part 5v2, a video that's been in the works for almost a week now. I apologize for the long wait for the video, but I've made sure that it's as good as possible. So here's the order that we made last time, including the part 3v2 Motor 6D fix. This part is gonna be a lot a lot of scripting, but I'll be trying to explain how all of this works, unlike my first part 5 video, that way you can understand the logic behind the script. So in this case I've made a duplicate of the aura, and here we're gonna be starting by packing everything into a grouping part, aka everything that's not separate parts like the spinner for our two particles around our character. So the only things we'll keep is the GUI, the attachments, the particle emitters, the point light, and the sound. So you can do this with any body part of the rig, but in this case I'll be showing it for only one part. It will work the exact same way for anything else, like the left arm, the right arm, any of the legs, or even the head. So as you can see, I've dragged this into server storage, which is where we'll be storing all of our aura things. Here, on the sound, I've unticked playing, so we can enable it through a script later. This is going to work the exact same way through a grouping part if you've already watched part 5, but for those who don't know, here we'll be having a part that contains all the particles that we'll be attaching over to our character once it spawns in. To organize this better for the new method, I'm gonna add a folder where I'll be storing everything in the aura. Now I can rename both of these so they're easily recognizable. You can name this anything, but just make sure to reference them correctly in the script. So, now let's revisit the old script that we had from the previous part 5 video. Well, the first thing we notice is that this uses welds, which as you know are not allowed by Souls RNG, so let's remove them and everything else from the old script except for the essentials. The new method we're going to be using is entirely different, so welding and changing the C-frame is no longer going to work, so we'll just keep the first three lines inside the character added function. Here I'll just update the referencing, since now we have a folder to group all of this. For the new method, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take every single attachment, billboard GUI, point light, everything like that, from our clone over to our character, instead of risking bugs happening. So if you follow along closely what I'm doing here, I'm creating a loop that will take every single child under the grouping part, which is everything under it, and it's going to go ahead and change the parent over to the humanoid root part. Here I cut because I realized I made a mistake and I corrected it here. So now if we run this, you'll notice that everything that used to be on the humanoid root part of the rig is now on our character. So this can work for any body part on the character. All you need to do is just to change the humanoid root part for something else and change the grouping part to a different one if you have multiple ones for your character. It's just copy pasting with a little bit of extra work. Next up, we're going to start creating the Motor 6D welds like in the part 3v2. And this time we're going to be doing it through a script because of course we can't have the character parts pre-made. We have to attach them to the character parts that get created when we join the game. So the entire process revolves creating Motor 6D using instance.new, which will work through a script. This will allow us to automatically add those parts to whatever character and whatever player we want to without any additional hassle. So here I'm starting to reference the bottom part that I copied over to the Aura folder in server storage. As you can see, we now have the variable named bottom to represent it. Instead of making a second variable, I just decided to clone it right here. Now the next part of all of this will involve us using instance.new to make the motor 6D that connects bottom to our character slash humanoid root part.
Now this brand new variable will represent a brand new Motor 6D weld. But to set up the properties, you have to do it yourself. So first of all, I'll set the parent to humanoid brute part. Now here, part 0 and part 1 represent the two parts that are connected. Part 0 will be the main part, the one that will control part 1, and part 1 is the part that will be controlled or could be individually controlled. So since we want the bottom to connect to humanoid root part, our humanoid root part will be part 0 and bottom will be part 1. Just like inside of the Motor 6D weld that we have in our character that we made last time. Here it is right here. So here I've made a cut because I had to do a few adjustments. First of all, I forgot to mention, you have to parent the part over to your character and changing the position offset and the orientation according to what it's supposed to be. I'll explain this later in the video. So the next part of this involves us doing almost the exact same thing with the spinning blocks, except this time the process will be slightly different because we already have a base code for all of this and it's also going to be structured a little bit different. So here I've copied them over to server storage in the Aura folder. The way to figure out the correct position and orientation for your part is by checking their settings over in the actual workspace. So as you can see here, it says exactly what we need to change it to. Orientation 0, 180, 0. And then the position, that won't matter, except for the position inside of the Motor 6D, because we're working on an offset-based system and not a global position system. Basically what that means is that the position depends on where the humanoid root part is and not where the part is by itself in the world. So right here in this Motor 6D constraint, we are going to see there is the offset position right here. In this case, it's minus 5, 0, 0. Next up, we'll actually add this to our Aura packing script. So if we come back to it right here, we can already start by just duplicating what we have here with the bottom part and just change out the variables to what we need for the spin 1 part. So here, I'll just go through the process of renaming everything to a different name, that way we don't interfere with the previously done Border 6D for the bottom part. So here I realized I forgot to actually make the center part that controls both the spin blocks, which is what I'm going to do right here after this quick cut. This entire recording had a lot a lot of cuts simply because of the fact that I was testing things as I go because I wanted to make sure that it's the best that it could be. And also that it has no mistakes. So here I've picked out the actual orientation from the actual part. Now, I don't need to play around and figure out what the right one is. And because we already knew the offset of the position through the Motor 6D constraint, we can already set this up with a Vector3.new and using the position of the part 0 that it's attached to. In this case, that's the humanoid root part. Here I made a mistake that I'm going to correct very shortly, and that's that I made the parent and the part 0 bottom, when it's actually supposed to be the center part, which I have not set up yet, as I said a little bit ago. So here I've cut quickly, I've added the center part over to the Aura folder, and now I'll set up the center part by just copying the exact same code and switching out the variable names just like before.
here if you're wondering what those weird names mean with the characters and the underscores and everything. It just stands for the first letter of the name of the part that I'm cloning and Motor 6D aka MT6D. In the case of the bottom part it's B MT6D, for the center it's C MT6D and for spinner 1 it's S1 MT6D. That way it's short to write but also easy to recognize. So here, since the center block's position is the exact same as the humanoid boot part, I don't actually need to have this vector 3.new plus HRP position. I just leave HRP position as it is. And now I'll just find the original orientation of the center part and I'll add it right here. And now we have ourselves a finished center and spin one block. So now it's time to actually test this and see if this works. I know for sure it's gonna work because I cut this to when it actually worked. Editing magic. The next step is simple, we just copy the exact same code for spin 2 and change out a few little things to make it work for that part specifically. I also forgot to mention, make sure the max velocity is 0.1 in case that the attached part with motor 6D is a moving part. So right now adding the max velocity for every single part is not really going to do anything, but trust me, you should do it now to prevent bugs later on. So now it's actually time to copy and paste this block of code and make it work for spin 2 because it's the exact same thing except with different names and a different offset. In this case, it will be plus 5 instead of minus 5, simply because those parts are opposite to each other. And now if we go ahead and test it right here, we're going to see that it works just as well as it should. Now we finally finished the entirety of the part attaching. The only thing left is to actually animate this. So due to a lot of requests in my past videos, I'm going to show you how to add a walk animation that's separate from your idle animation. So here we have the updated script, which I'll leave in the paste bin link below. This works very similar to the first script in the sense that all we're doing is loading three animations instead of one, one of which is going to be playing all the time, and the other two will be cycling depending on if you're moving or not. The one that's going to be always playing is the one at the bottom, which is a spinning animation with the two blocks. And the two top ones are going to be the idle and walking. So here, I'm just going to enable this, and I'm going to add it over to the starter character scripts. Now if I just test this out, you're gonna see I have one animation playing when I'm idle, and a different one when I'm walking. Don't mind the walking animation, I got lazy. Now I can officially declare the entirety of the particles of the aura working. One thing that I did forget is to enable the sound, because I checked it off at the beginning of the video if you don't remember. To enable it whenever it's added to the player, all we'll do is go into the 4IV in pairs loop that I added over here and add a conditional statement that checks if the part is a sound and enables the playing property. And now it's officially done. This is the final Aura version 2. 
It looks almost the exact same, but it's up to Souls RNG standards and can actually be added into the game. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I really hope that this helps you out because I worked really hard on this and I worked hard to make these scripts in order for you guys to have the best possible experience making auras and the easiest time adjusting them if you need to. I also wanted to point out that I've reached over 100,000 channel views, which is insane because I had less than 500 at the time of me posting part 1. And finally, stay tuned for the next part coming pretty soon. Oh yeah, one more thing. Yeah, I forgot something else again. So for the animate script itself, make sure it's not a local script like I made it here, but in fact make sure that it's going to be a script with run context set to client. This just allows the script to run in workspace unlike other local scripts that have to be ran somewhere from within the player or inside of the replicated storage. You shouldn't really need to understand this, but just make sure that your script is in fact one context client. So yeah, that's basically it, and once again, stay tuned for the next part, since it's going to be a pretty useful one. Hint. It's about creating aura rolling animations. Bye.